Shravanam, I need for five movements, five Indian soloists. Mm -hmm. And he had a very clear vision. He said, I need something from north of India. Oh. I need something from south of India. I need everybody the best in the world coming in. And this is serious music. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm writing some serious music. I need serious musicians. And how do we contact? He again came to India. And I was basically trying to arrange meetings with some of the finest musicians in India. Vocalist, flautist, stringed instrument players. So we started visiting everybody. And when it and the best part is every phone call you call somebody and say that, you know, for Swami's Bhagwan's 90th birthday, we want to do a music program and it's a symphony and we have about 100 musicians and we would like you to be a soloist. There was never a single phone call where somebody said no at the first go. Wow. Everybody was said, okay, we'll meet. Wow. And this is not something that is very easy in the music industry, you know, the insights of it. Yes. Only the power of Bhagwan, the magnet that he is, can make somebody yes. say, okay, we'll come. Otherwise, these musicians are so premier they have seen enough. They have got invitations from some of the best yes. in the world. Yes. And they have just thought about it to say yes or no. Yeah. Satya Sai Baba and it is yes. <laughs> and some of the musicians don't know Baba hmm. in person or they were not devotees. You know about it. Yes. But when we say Puttaparthi and we are doing a symphony, would you come? They'll say, oh yes, it will be great. Okay, let's meet up. You know. Wow. See, at every stage there was positivity. Whether they could come or not, depending on the schedule and when we wanted to, to do rehearsals were secondary. But it was exactly the Swami's way. Everything was a yes. Yeah. And that's how uh, we found all the soloists, we went to their house. Mike would, I would carry a keyboard wherever we go, would you believe? <laughs> because everybody will want to um, see with musicians, you, see with music, with art, no, you can't speak about it. Mm -hmm. You can't talk about your composition. It has its language. You have to hear it. Yes. Only if you hear it will you know whether you can play in it or not. Mm -hmm. So how will, you, how will you make somebody understand? If we go to Srimati Sudha Raghunathan and we tell her, look, we have this movement, we have this music, will you sing? What's the pitch? What is the range? Yeah, because it's a symphony. Will I be able to sing? <laughs> will I fit in there? Yes. How is it going to be written for me? So it's very, very mutual. So from the starting stage, the score had to be written only with interaction. It's not like you do some music and you choose musicians to come and perform. You make music according to who is available. So this is like custom fit dress, you know. It's not something you pick up from the shelves in a mall. It has to be tailored. And for Swami, everything is tailored, you know. Nothing is ready made. Everything is yes. taken care. Every note was taken. So you, you go and say, for example, you wanted a slide guitar. He wanted slide guitar, Pandit Debashish Bhattacharya. That instrument has a restriction. Only certain pitch you can play. Yeah. Beyond that, you can't. Yes. So how will he write music to that pitch? And symphony has multiple pictures. It keeps changing. Yes. How will you write? How will you write music that will suit this at the same time not sound monotonous? And it is called a symphony, which means it has harmony and mm. chords, and it keeps transposing. Transposing means <laughs> pitch shifting. Yes. How will you incubate all this? And especially very challenging for Indian musicians because 
if, if the pitch constantly shifts. It's very difficult. See, for example, percussion, like the other day Mani sir was telling. Yes. One line of music has one pitch. The next line, the pitch changes. The next line, pitch changes. So how do you distribute? So this is where Swami's man management comes as music management. <laughs> you know? hmm. So Actually. much management, then. how do you manage? that we approached and we said they're going to do, there was a little bit of people who were slightly paranoid. <laughs> what are we going to play? Where are we going to play? Because Indian music, see, one thing we must understand is Indian music is Mano Dharma. It's your freedom of expression. You mm. choose a raga and mm. then what comes now never comes again. Yes. It's like sunrise and sunset. Yes. It's the same, but every time it is different. Different, yeah. Right? Yes. So, it may be the same raga, it may yeah. be the same bhajan. You Correct. sing it ten times, yes. it's going to sound ten different times. Yes. This music is written. Written. <laughs> you are in a grid. Yes. You follow. Yes. It's not easy. It's not easy. I think most of these musicians are musicians whose name has become synonymous with their instruments. Yes. It is a ghatam suresh. Yes. It is a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, know, if know, you take the violin kanjira duo... Amrit. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a kanjira amrit. Yeah. If you take the violin, violin duo, duo... Yeah, they Ganesh are the Kumarish. violin Ganesh Kumarish. Yes. And, and so these are the people who have been only enriching their music. They've been yeah. redefining uh, how yes. to play on their instrument. So yeah. I, whenever they go on stage, it just comes. That same raga, it could take, as you mentioned, yeah. different shapes on different days yeah. through them. So it is not something you cannot straight jacket them into, you know, play this or play that. And the symphony demanded that. So, um, so my role started slowly shifting from trying to be a pointing finger, <laughs> saying, okay, Mike, some things are like this. And also the psychology between a European composer to Indian musician is very, very different. Mm. You know, it was very difficult for him to understand our musicians and it was very difficult for our musicians to understand him as well. Mm. So we needed a catalyst. And unknowingly, I had to be one. You know, there was no intention <laughs> because I could express things in music. I could understand what he wants. And there is a certain way in which Mr. Mike will tell me. And then I had to not put it the way he wants because I know probably these people may not understand it clearly yes. the way he expresses. So I know the Indian way. So I had to put forth to them saying, okay, don't worry. Music is like this, but all you have to do is only this. Don't worry about the rest. Yes. He may say, when you are singing, we'll have a lot of violence mm. and you have a choir and other mm. things. It sounds like, it sounds <laughs> like, oh, okay, how am I going to sing? Or how am I going to play? <laughs> Too overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm here telling, you don't do anything. Mm. We as rhythm instrumentalists will be playing. Yeah. You sing just five avartanams. What's happening there, you don't bother. <laughs> don't bother. But while for him, all the other soloists in the West, yeah. They, they just don't sing like that, you know. Yeah. They hear the harmony right. and they sing for it. Mm. So, for me, the platform was, you know, Swami was literally grooming me to understand how to understand various aspects of music mm. with Sai Symphony. I am so grateful to Bhagwan because he was the greatest teacher to all of us. <laughs> you know, I didn't have any other teacher. He was the greatest teacher and real-time teaching. <laughs> and in his absence, physically, if Swami was there, he very quickly say, you pick this, you do this, <laughs> call them, do the work is simple. Mm -hmm. Here he has to work through us. We are all just his instruments. 